Welcome back to AM Buffalo. Now, May is Mental Health Awareness Month, so we're going to dive into it. Hey, it's end of April. Let's get into it fast because it is part of our Buffalo Strong Conversations, talking about mental health. It's a big thing with the pandemic. So many more people are struggling with anxiety and depression. And ABC Chief Meteorologist Ginger Z is standing by because she is a woman who knows exactly what it's like to be going through a mental health journey. Ginger, thank you so much for joining us today and being so open with your own journey through mental health. It's, um, it's such a good thing to be able to talk about because there's so much stigma around it. And um, you know, it's, it's something that I think it has to end, mm -hmm. that stigma. Because as you found out, you can function, you can have a great life. And you know, I think the stigma is right. We, that is ending and, and my experience in talking about my own journey, I see people starting to be able to say, I have depression, I have anxiety, I suffer with X, right? The, what I think we need to do is get rid of the stigma around the action that we have to take. I mean, it's wonderful to have a month for mental health, but I think every day should be mental health day. Every single person is touched by this. If it's not themselves, it's a close family member. And I like to think about my mental health just as important and put as much energy, time and money into my mental health that I do my physical health. If we did that, we would be in such a better place, I think, societally, and then the stigma would be erased because the action of making your mind healthy would be a part of our everyday talk. It's so true, and I love that you call your therapist as like she's like a, a, a physical, a personal trainer for your mind, which is exactly what they are. And we really should get rid of this stigma, this idea that we can get through things on our own. Because I know for you that was a, a big block. I mean. Initially, like a little backstory with you, you suffered narcolepsy when it was finally diagnosed. I mean, you were literally crashing mm -hmm. your car, falling asleep at the wheel, which is so terrifying. But it was that medication yeah. that triggered clinical depression for you. But even then, it took some time before you were able to accept it and go and get help. And you even had your mum saying, please get help. But it was that stigma that was blocking you. Mm hmm. Yeah, so tell us oh, a little yeah. bit about that. Oh yeah, the stigma, um, and there were traumas that I hadn't really dealt with. Yeah, I think the combination of feeling like I had just started my career, I didn't want my boss or my coworkers to know or think, oh, this girl, she's got you know a lot going on, because there's absolutely that stigma. Whereas, had I broken my leg and I went to the hospital, nobody would blink an eye. And so I'd love for it to be the case, especially for me. It took 10 years of kind of dipping in and out of therapists, not really committing, not being fully transparent with those therapists, until I really said, I'm at my very lowest and I can't get out of here alive. I need help. And I went to the hospital like you would if you broke your leg. And there they were able to spend time with me. I was inpatient when I was diagnosed properly because they had enough time to do that. I was given a specialist in the type of mental health help that I needed. And I can't tell you the prosperity, the joy and the healing that I've felt ever since. It's also, though, not done, right? Just like your physical health, that personal trainer, you don't go to your personal trainer for three months, you're getting, you're ripped and you're looking so good, and then you stop. There's intense maintenance and hard work that goes along with oh, keeping your mental long, health at a very good place. And so I think that's the most important thing to remember. Oh yeah, and because of that, you've launched your podcast. You have a whole lot of resources that other people can access. You know, it's, it's a really great, amount of a community that you've really created around things that have helped you tell us a little bit more about that yeah that's that's the one thing that i realized as i was writing my first book and i started having people interact how lucky am i that i had financial ability i had support and family members around me and i had the ability to get to that hospital there are a lot of people who don't have that or don't have access to it let alone the stigma so my charge in life now has really been about not just ending a stigma but creating an opportunity and a path so others have these places to start their healing because i realize i'm privileged in that and not everybody has access and so that would be my ultimate goal is to to make that hospitalization, almost like drugs and alcohol. At this point, if somebody says, oh, you know, she's going to, for drug and alcohol rehabilitation, we all say, well, good for them. That's what I think we need to feel like about mental health. Mm. 
I think absolutely. And you had your book, Natural Disaster. I cover them. I am one that came out a couple of years ago. But you've got a new book coming out in October. Tell us about that one. It's The Calm After the Storm. Yeah, but it is not calm, I will say that. So as after I wrote Natural Disaster, which was not intentional, by the way, I went to write a baby book about weather, and then I started talking to the publisher slash editor, and she's very good. She got all these stories out of me, and she said, that's a book. And so I started writing what, what was meant to be a weather book for babies came out about a book about suicide and depression. Um, <laughs> but once I had that book out there, I started realizing the connection I had to other human beings and the help that it gave people. I've had emails. I'll have them today. I'll have direct messages that say, I read your book. It saved my life. Like the gravity of that is really, really big. It's very heavy. And very, it's almost my responsibility to write more, I felt like, because those tools that I can share that I spent a lot of money and had a lot of support for, I can share in a book that other people can gather and share with their people. So that's what the second book is about. It's many more tools. But as I was writing it, I realized that there were a couple of big traumas in my life that I had not addressed yet. This book is going to be it's it's way it's way heavier than the first one. Um, if that was you know partly sunny, this is this is full on overcast skies in much of the book. Now there's humor, there's a lot of self-deprecation, so you will find that in there. But I really hope that people can see those traumas uh, that I had blocked even until just a couple of years ago, and hopefully it helps them to bring out something in themselves. One of the I big indicators, absolutely. I'll just share this. When I saw Christine Blase Ford do her speech um, at the trial and we all saw her giving her her account of what happened in her sexual assault I had a big breakdown and that's when I started to change what this next book was about oh that's really powerful it's so powerful ginger honestly thank you so much I'm really excited for this because I think it is a journey through mental health and it is removing layers and things come up and there's nothing to be afraid of because we get through it together and with resources like this right. and ins inspiration, inspirating, <laughs> inspiring people like you. Now, Ginger, just before you mm -hmm. go, I need you to do one little thing for us. Our chief meteorologist here at Channel 7, Aaron Menkowski, he I would say he's probably your biggest fan, although he did you did lose out to Aristotle for ideal <laughs> dinner date. But can you just say a quick little hi to Aaron oh, for okay. us and All then right. we'll let you get out of here. <laughs> Of course. <laughs> of course. Aaron, good morning. I only want to play second fiddle to Aristotle. That, that I will take that. And Mel and AM Buffalo, thank you so much for making this conversation happen. I hope you get to do it every day in May and every day going forward. You all are wonderful. Thank you for having me. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. Ginger Z, ABC News Chief Meteorologist, talking with, with us here. A Buffalo Strong Conversation on AM Buffalo.